Hey guys, welcome to part five of this video series um, with the, the barrel stove. Um, in this, this video is going to be, um, we're going to just kind of shift gears a little bit and we're going to work on uh, building the, the heat exchanger or the copper piping within the, within the stove for, uh, for the pool. So we're going to shift gears a little bit and um, we'll get into it. Stick around. Okay guys, thanks for sticking around. Um, let me slide out of the way here a little bit and tilt the camera down and you'll see that I've started the heat exchanger process already. Um, the reason being it, that I didn't show me soldering all this together is because honestly this is the first time I've soldered copper pipes together. So it was like a like a learning curve for myself. So I didn't really want to put that on camera because obviously I'm not a professional. I mean, none of my videos I'm a professional in, I guess, but, uh, but let me put some light in here for you so you can kind of see what's going on. Is that a little better? I'll move you in a little closer here. Okay. So what I have is I just bought a bunch of straight three quarter inch copper pipe and a, and a ton of uh, three quarter inch uh, 90s with three quarter inch uh, street 90s and just I'm just soldering them all together going back and forth here right now as you see it this heat exchanger part is in backwards okay um, how this will actually come out and I'll rotate it and put it back in that's why this part is kind of a u-shaped this is the going to be the opening for the, the exhaust pipe back there and the dampener to give the dampener room to move. Um, so that's why I built that kind of in there. So like I said, this is the opposite of how it's actually going to be assembled. <clears throat> um, right now, as it sits, I have roughly, I think it's around 58 feet of pipe in here. Um, there's two layers of pipes. As you can see, there's a bottom layer and then a, to and a top layer. My goal was I actually bought, um, I bought 70 feet. So I bought seven, seven, 10 foot sticks. Here, let me back this up a little bit so you guys can see me and, and I can talk to you. But I, I still isn't very good here. Let's move that up a bit more. Okay, so I bought, uh, I bought seven 10 foot sticks of the three quarter inch copper. So my goal is, is to get 70 feet of pipe into this barrel. Um, I don't know, I didn't come up with that number any particular way. Um, I just thought that was a, uh, you know, it'd be a lot. I don't know. I honestly don't know how I come up with that number, but that is the number I come up with. That's how much copper I bought. Um, and so I want to get as in, much in there as I can. The, the more I get in there, I think it's going to be the better as far as being able to heat the pool. Okay guys, so we are going to uh, do a little pressure test. Um, like I said, do this at your, at your own risk. I don't know if this is uh, kosher, you know, anything you're supposed to be doing. But I built some air pressure um, in an air compressor. I got about 40 PSI in there. Um, so, and I, I bought this adapter, okay. This is a three quarter inch uh, male pipe thread. That, that will screw into that uh, the adapter I had soldered onto the pipe I showed you. On the other end is a garden hose fitting, and I can't remember the exact, uh, uh, what do you might call it? I mean, it's three quarter inch, but I don't remember the thread size. <clears throat> then what's gonna go into the, the, the garden hose part is this adapter. Um, it will screw right into here, like that, and then I just plug in my my female quick connect on my air hose. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put some pipe dope on this three quarter fitting and get that screwed in there. I'll probably, uh, I'll fast forward this video a little bit, or not fast forward, but. Uh... All 
Okay, now we got that fitting on there. I'm gonna put the, the air hose adapter on there. All right. Now when you're tightening stuff on these lines, like I just did right here with this, you should really have a backer, what's called a backer a wrench, to hold it from twisting on that pipe. So definitely do that, have a backer wrench while you're tightening. I'm not going full force on it, tighten it up, I'm just snugging it more or less, it's just there. And I don't really care if this part leaks, you know? So, let's, uh, let's look up the air and see what she does. You can hear the air going through the lines, filling up with pressure. Once that stabilizes, we'll get our, our, our gas leak out. Okay. So this is the stuff I'm using, guys. It's just from an Ace brand uh, gas leak detector. You can use soap and water, you know, use some dish soap and water if you want. Um, um, this works good also. Um, pretty much anything that'll bubble up. That's kind of a liquid. So, all right, let's uh, test this out. We're gonna, I'm just gonna test all of my joints here. Put some of this soap on there. Okay, guys, well, um, I can't, it's hard to believe. It is hard to believe, but I don't have any leaks. First time soldering these copper joints together and I don't have any leaks. I am, I'll pat myself on the back because I'm kind of, I'm shocked. But I don't see any bubbles, everything looks good. I did have one leak, uh, I will say that, but it's, it's where it's at. Is where I told you, right here, where I screwed in that uh, that brass that brass fitting, and put that Teflon tape on there. It is leaking right there, but that's you know just because I didn't tighten it down good is all. I didn't tighten it tight. I just wanted to get air pressure in here. Air compressor still at looks like about forty pounds still. I mean, and no bubbles, so awesome. So that. That'll be it for this part. What I'm going to do next is I, I am going to uh, move that camera a bit. I am going to uh, get them four pieces soldered on. And um, I'm going to do that off camera. Like I said, I'm still not good at it. I don't want, uh, I don't want to be embarrassed. But uh, I'm going to get them four pieces soldered on. And then I'll come back and show you. The final result with that and how we're going to hold all this piping in here on top of the you know on the top of the barrel so i'm going to shut the camera off and i'll be right back with you okay guys thanks for sticking around to the end of this video um it's this is actually the a couple days later to be honest um that i finally got this heat exchanger done and in the barrel um, kind of a pain in the butt, but we got her and um, we're there. So let me turn the, the camera around here and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so as you can see, the barrel is upright right now. And you can see all the, the copper coiling on top. Let me come in here for a closer view. So what I got here is just a strapping, holding it up there. I got three bolts on each strapping, one in the center and then one on each side, okay? And then another strap here with another three bolts. So that's what's holding that heat exchanger up. Um, and I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, what did I figure? I got... Uh, roughly about 60 feet of piping, three quarter inch um, type M copper piping in here. 
So I ended up with 60 feet. I, I didn't put on all four sections of the pipe. I still got two extras. Um, I, honestly, it was just because of I didn't want to pull apart my solder joints on, on the one end. So that's where we sit with that. Um, the, the strapping that I used um, is, let me get a picture of it here. It's just three quarter inch flat, uh, flat stock, tw uh, 12 gauge. Um, got it in four foot sections and I just used two, you know, two four foot sections. Honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of light gauge, but I'm hoping it'll, I'm hoping it'll work. Um, so there we are with that. I do got it stuck out of the back of the barrel now. You can see right here. I, what I did is I come out with, on you know, both of them on one side. Come out with 90, and I come in the center, both the center of the barrel. I come down with two 90s here, and then I come straight down, and I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to tie in to my piping that goes into the ground. Um, there it goes to the pool. So that's where I'm at. I, I pressure tested everything. Everything is uh, doesn't leak, so we're we're good there. Um, so that's where we're at with the the barrel stove. Um, like I said, there's no leaks. I highly, highly recommend if you're doing this project for your pool, is to make sure you flush these lines out before you actually hook it up to the pool. Um, <clears throat> last, well, a couple nights ago, I just put some water in there to, you know, test leaks and whatnot. And man, I had a ton of crap coming out of the lines as far as the, all the, the paste and everything, residual paste. So definitely, definitely flush your lines before you hook it up to your, your pool. Um, I did add a little feature. Let me move you a little closer here. Did add this feature to the, the smokestack. I don't know if it's gonna work, how it's gonna work yet, but um, this just tells you the burn temperature of, of your fire. Um, you got here is you know, the creosote zone, um, roughly what, I don't know, 250 to, to 550 degrees is your burn zone. And then any hotter than that is uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading that wrong. 250 to, yeah, 550 degrees Fahrenheit is your burn zone. Any hotter than that is over, over fire, overheating. Um, so I got that just as a little tool to see how, where I'm at as far as how hot the fire is, so. Okay, so <clears throat> I am gonna show you guys one thing. If you stuck around at the end of this video, I, and I, I appreciate you guys that you have, I'm gonna show you a little thing that I found out when I was doing uh, my first burn in this barrel. Um, and it involves venting of the, the, sto the, the door stove. So stick around, I'm gonna stick the, the door on the front of, this, uh, front of this barrel and I'm gonna speed the video up at this point and I'm gonna stick that on real quick and I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay guys, so we got our, our front of our barrel back on, our, do our stove on, or our door in place. You'll notice this pipe sticking out of here. I had a problem, and, and I don't know this, you may not have this problem, but with this particular uh, vent, how, how tall my, my smokestack is, I had, a, I had a draft problem, um, or a, an air intake problem. Um, when I had these vents wide open, and my dampener wide open, that fire would not stay lit in there. And you've probably seen in that last video of the part four, where it took me forever to light a fire in there. And that was why. It was not getting enough air to stay, for the fire to stay lit. So, what I did is I, I just took out the, the, the plug cap for this, this, I don't know what you call it, bunghole or whatever, but 
I took that out and, and stuck this uh, uh, steel pipe in there, you know, threaded steel pipe, and then lit the fire again, and it, it was way better. Because what was happening is I could leave the door cracked open like that, you know, about, a, about an inch or so, and the fire would just, it would, it would burn just fine. So this stove, <clears throat> designed like this with them vents, does not get enough air. Just so you know, realize that when you buy these kits. You know, it, it may be different if, you had a if I had a longer smokestack where it would pull more of a draft maybe. That's possible, I don't know. I'm new to, you know, wood stoves in general. So um, leave a comment below. Uh, maybe you can give me some help on that if I went higher, would I, you know, I don't know. But, you know, designed the way it is, it was not getting enough air. So, that being said, how I put my, you know, having this on top is not ideal. It's not efficient either. Because um, I'm, I'm pulling in the extra air in the top. Okay? Which I would rather be pulling it than the bottom on the bottom of the fire. <clears throat> so, <laughs> having to do it all over again, what I would do is I would put this bigger port on the bottom and then mount my stove my door just above that okay and then then this open then this would would draw that draft underneath so having to do it all over again i would flip this door right upside down is what i would do um and have this on the bottom so that that kind of sucks you know I, when this barrel burns out, I guess I'll do it that way the next time. But the only thing I might add to this is a little dampener door. Um, I've seen uh, another YouTuber is, is, uh, is called Wrangle Star, Wrangler Star. Great YouTuber. If you, if you don't know of him, go check him out. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll even put a link in the description to his channel. He's got some great videos. But he, did, he built a, a double barrel stove. And he found out the same issue that I'm having, where it was not getting enough air. So he did the same thing, but what he did is he welded a nut on here, okay? And then you build yourself a little plate with a bolt and a spring, and then you can use this as a, you can use that as a, a dampener, or, you know, a dampener as well. You can close off the air intake if you would like. Um, I may do that. Um, so that's, that might be the thing that I do. I'm not going to put that on video or anything, but just so you guys know that the way I have this, the stock vent here didn't get enough air. Um, so <clears throat> think about it, you know, you have your options. If I, like I said, if I had to do it over again, this would be on the bottom and I would put my door, bottom of my door right up in here. So, so guys, um, that's going to be really it for this series um, for now. Uh, I, I, I do plan on, I'm going to, once it, springtime comes here in the UP, we are going to get this hooked up to the pool. Um, we, we are going to uh, uh, fire it up and, and try it out. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it on video once we get it going and get it set up. Um, so that, that'll be the, the very end to this series. But for now, for the next uh, four or five months here, we're in winter. So um, that's going to be the, the temporary end to this series. But I will, I will post a video of how it works and whatnot when springtime comes. Um, so I appreciate you guys following along in this series. It's been, a, it's been a kind of a cool project, kind of fun. Um, as far as money-wise, how much I got into it, let me tell you, the copper's not cheap, um, for sure. Uh, I don't know what it's like in other parts of the world or whatever, but here in the United States, copper's not cheap. Um, so I, total, I would say, including the stove kit, the barrel, um, the, the smokestack I had on hand so I didn't have to buy that, you know, including this temp gauge, all the copper piping. Um, I got probably roughly 300, 350 bucks into this thing. Um, so not cheap. 
but it's still cheaper than buying a, uh, a propane heater for my pool. So, <clears throat> so anyway, guys, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. If you've made it to the end, awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll post another one, follow up when it's actually warmer out and we got it hooked up to the pool and going. Oh, um, I am going to build a stand for this thing. Uh, it probably just made out of like two by four or something, something real easy. But I, I, I like it at this height. Easy to feed wood into and whatnot. So I, it's not going on the ground or anything. Get, screw that, right? And bend over and put wood into it. So I am going to build a stand for it. Um, but I may or may not make a video on that. I'm not sure yet. But, but uh, anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching. I appreciate you sticking around to the end here. Um, more videos to come. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, hit the bell if you want to hit the bell. That way you get notifications when I do upload a video. But other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.